My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I'm here with the latest collection of gaming news. I have a quite a bit for you today, as we have yet more rumours about Spyro coming to our screens once more, Battlefield 5 rumours and Detroit Become Human release date, as well as a couple of interesting pieces regarding the Nintendo Switch, and finally something very interesting for the Xbox One X, a new update on the way. So let's begin things with Spyro. Rumours have been flying thick and fast since a Kotaku article surfaced last month basically saying that a remaster of the original Spyro the Dragon trilogy was in the works and now we have some more fuel for this particular rumour fire thanks to a Twitter user by the name of Jump Button who discovered a Twitter account by the name of Spyro the Dragon. Now the account is currently locked but interestingly enough it is registered to a full official Activision email address and as a further breadcrumb in the trail the account sorry the name of the account sorry is Falcon McRob which could be meaningful as Activision has a voiceover project in production codenamed Falcon so obviously that's getting a little bit more like okay you're kind of bending it a little bit there but I would say the fact that this Twitter account exists and is linked to an official Activision email address is pretty interesting and I would say that yep joined with the previous reports from Kotaku, I would say that this remake is pretty much confirmed. Obviously, this is not confirmed officially. You should always take rumours with a pinch of salt and all that good stuff, so do keep that in mind. However, given how well the Crash Bandicoot remaster did, I would not be shocked at all to see them remaking Spyro at all. And to be honest, I would be quite happy with that. While I didn't play Spyro as much as I played Crash Bandicoot, it definitely was one of my most played series on the PS1 so I'd be more than happy to see Spyro make a return to our screens. I think as long as it's done in the same way as the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy was and you know very much like you know improving upon the little things tweaking things here and there but mostly just staying true to the formula and just you know basically remastering the graphics and not turning it into what Spyro turned into in more recent years which is just ugh, let's just not so, obviously, we should wait and see, but I'm definitely interested. Anyway, next up on our list is Battlefield 5. And once again, this is a rumour, but according to a new report, the next Battlefield game is going to be going to its roots, and that is, of course, World War II. And it's actually going to be called Battlefield 5, and apparently was going around internally at DICE under Battlefield 2, but it's just going to go Battlefield 5. Which obviously is a little bit confusing given the last title was Battlefield 1 set in World War 1 so Battlefield 2 would obviously kind of make sense in that regard but maybe they're not trying to confuse things even further to be like nope it's Battlefield 5 and it's going back to World War 2 and apparently they decided to do this some years ago. So there is speculation surrounding the upcoming Battlefield game as of course Battlefield 1 did rather well for itself and despite some criticisms of its single player campaign did really well in its multiplayer as these games tend to do and according to a new report a new Battlefield game is on its way that's not exactly shocking however what might be surprising or at least interesting to you is that the game is allegedly going to be set in World War 2 and rather interestingly as well it's also going to be called Battlefield 5 rather than you might expect with Battlefield 2 following on from Battlefield 1. I know they kind of messed things up with that naming convention but Apparently it is going to be called Battlefield 5, not Battlefield 2. I guess they feel it would be confusing things even further. But regardless of that, according to a report from VentureBeat, it is going to be called Battlefield 5, and it is also going to be set in World War 2, as I've already said. Apparently this was a decision made quite some time ago, and the plan was to do the World War 1 game, see how well that did, and then of course do the World War 2 game afterwards. I think this would go down rather well, especially after how well Battlefield 1 actually did, and obviously Battlefield 1943 and 1942, classic Battlefield games set in World War 2, so I think this would be a pretty smart decision and would definitely go down well with fans. I think a lot of people are getting rather tired of the modern military setting myself, I'm not hugely into modern military games, so a set of return to the roots as it were, return to the classic setting would definitely be a, a breath of fresh air. I don't, I, 
can't believe I just said that because a few years ago I'd be like, oh, I'm so tired of all these World War Two games. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm actually cool with the return to World War Two because all these sort of near future modern military games, like, yeah, I'd like a break from that now, please. We're just going to go in this cycle forever, really, aren't we? Anyway, anyway, moving on swiftly to Detroit Become Human. Now, this is going to be a, quite a quick one as it is just a release date for this title, which is definitely going to be an interesting one to watch. Regardless of your opinions on his games, David Cage makes things that are weird and interesting. Not always in a good way, obviously. Personally, I'm not keen on them myself. But obviously, my opinion is kind of irrelevant. Regardless of that, however, the release date is May 25th. And of course, it's only going to be on the PS4. I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye out on reviews for this one. Because the setting is definitely going to be a cool one. But I have concerns that it's it's just going to be David Cage again. And we've seen another game do what David Cage tries to do, but better. And that is, of course, Until Dawn. But of course, you know, it could prove me wrong. Maybe this is going to be the game that isn't weird and with shoddy writing and bad characters. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, we've got a couple of Nintendo Switch pieces up next. The first one is still a bit up in the air as Nintendo have yet to comment on it, so do keep that in mind. But Nintendo users are finding that if perhaps they bought the console at launch or around launch, or they've had it for a few months, that their logged playtime from one year ago, or around that, is gone. So it appears to be the case, and again, Nintendo have yet to comment, so this might be fixed in a new update, it might just be a bug, we don't know. However, at the moment, it appears that the system is resetting the amount of time which games have been played on or before March the 2nd, which of course is today. So it suggests that the Switch is only tracking the month and the day rather than the actual year. So basically it means that whereas before you would log on and say that, hey, you've put like, you know, 100 hours into Zelda just for instance, it would now say, you know, started playing zero days ago or started playing two hours ago or something like that. So, obviously this is not like a huge thing, but a lot of people like to keep track of their playtime. They like to know, like, how long has this taken me? How long has it taken to get all of the content or this much content? And it's cool just to be like, I really enjoyed that game. I got X amount of hours on it. Even if it's not like the end of the world, a lot of people like to keep track of that sort of thing. And if this isn't a bug and it's a feature, then that's going to be a little disappointing. Obviously, you know, you know it's like chucking Nintendo Switch in the bin over it. But I would say that it's definitely going to upset some people if this isn't a bug. But again, it might very well be. And it could be fixed within a couple of days and it's just kind of swept under the rug. But we should wait and see for comment from Nintendo on this. At the moment, they haven't, as already said. But it's definitely raising some eyebrows, to say the least. What's also wait, raising some eyebrows, excuse me, is Blizzard are teasing the fact that the classic RPG Diablo is coming to the Switch itself. Now you might say, okay, how did Blizzard tease this? Well, they did it in a very Blizzard fashion. And there's a little Diablo nightlight, and I'll include the tweet in the description below this video. And it's literally just someone switching it on, sorry, switching it off and then on again. So basically... Yeah, this is kind of everyone in the tizzy going, oh my god, Diablo's coming to the Switch, and that would actually be pretty cool. I would be down for that. Of course, it's not confirmed at this stage, but yeah, that would be pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. So our final item is the Xbox Spring Update. As with any updates, this added a plethora of things, or is going to add a plethora of things to be more exact, as this is currently only available to those part of the Xbox Insider Alpha ring. However, the most interesting part of this update is the addition of 1440p support, which you may recall, if you keep your ear to the ground, Microsoft was teasing last week. So this is going to be coming to the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X, so it's going to be 1440p for support for games and media. So obviously that's 2560 by 1440. So this is cool for numerous reasons. The first one is definitely a more specific user-based scenario. However, numerous people have a PC monitor or PC monitors to be more exact. And a lot of those, not all of them naturally, but a lot of them have native 1440p support. So it might be cool to just plug your X or your S or whatever it happens to be into your PC monitor and enjoy some native 1440p. 
But obviously the most interesting thing is the fact that this offers another option to developers on the X. Now with the S this is most likely just going to be upscaling, but on the X obviously that's not necessarily going to be the case. I think it would be pretty cool if developers took this opportunity to offer a kind of middle ground as it were between 1080p and 4K as obviously 1440p while more demanding than 1080 is a lot less demanding than 4K. So it could be, for example, an option to get a higher frame rate or a more stable frame rate, or even if the frame rate is exactly the same, you could have a higher graphical setting, like more shadow detail and that sort of thing, because those sort of things might technically be turned down internally, obviously, on the 4K mode, because it's pushing way more pixels than that of the 1440p mode. Obviously, Microsoft are just adding support, so the option is there for developers, which, to be fair, is exactly what Microsoft said they would do with the X and their plan for it. They would give the developers the tools, they can have more frames, or they can have higher resolution, and it's up to them as to which they choose. And this definitely follows with it in line with that philosophy. So, personally, I, I think it would be pretty awesome if we saw numerous games update for this mode but obviously it is in the hands of developers and publishers as to whether or not they want to spend the time and obviously resources to do this i would love to see it but of course even if we don't see many games take it up it's definitely a plus point for me that microsoft have offered this to developers and of course to gamers as well anyway that's me done for this video thank you very much for watching do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already it does help out a great deal and i'll see you next time